So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Namaste and a very warm welcome to all of you to the Blub World Web Talks 228th episode. In the last 227 episodes, we have talked to, interacted with more than three to 4,000 school leaders, teachers, educationists from all across the world, where they have shared their ideas, opinions, innovations on how are they changing education and how is education changing them. Namaste, I am Daksh. I'm the founder of Blub World, which is a platform for teenagers where we try to inspire them through stories, so we keep asking teenagers that, are you doing something amazing in life? And is there something that can inspire others? If you don't have an inspiring story, don't worry. We have an inspiration for you on Blub World. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's session is basically focused around teen development or teen growth. How do teenagers really respond to society? How do they respond to culture? Because the biggest challenge that a parent faces when a teenager is growing is how to become that pressure valve between the society and your own child. That's why we'll be discussing the socio-cultural challenges or constraints that change the growth of a teenager. And what do school leaders feel about it? What do teenagers feel about it? Is it very overwhelming for a parent? Because when we specifically talk of teenagers, the schools normally tend to say that the parent has to play a bigger role. The parent has to say that the school has to play a bigger role. And most importantly, the teenager says that nobody's playing any role in my life. <laughs> so let's try to know from at least two parties that what do they think that are the different stakeholders really changing their own lives or are they impacting positively or negatively to the growth of a teenager? Let me invite the first speaker for today to share their opinions. But before I do that, just a word of caution, the Blub World Web Talks is a timed platform. So once your speaking time is over, you might get muted. It's like a speaking sprint. It's not a marathon. So you have three minutes. Try to put your best foot forward. It's like a 100 meter race that you start and quickly end, but try to put the maximum energy, the best points forward quickly, because the problem is internet has a very short and a low attention span. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I hope you enjoy this session. Let me invite the first speaker for today to share their opinions on what do they think, how to overcome socio-cultural constraints in teen development. A very warm welcome to the first speaker for today, Mrs. Anita Jairam, the Senior Principal of the Foundation School from Bangalore, Karnataka, India. Anita, ma'am, over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome. Thank you so much, okay, Mr. Daksh. Uh, I have a few uh, points to uh, say over here. Uh, regarding the socio-cultural factors, uh, the lifestyle, education, religion, beliefs, values, social, classes, attitudes, and demographics, and so on. So what I want to say here is children who are exposed to diverse experiences early in life develop a confident attitude and are more able to face challenges. Facing the challenges experienced by teenagers, as you were talking now, they should know their values, and your values are what you believe in, what you think is right or wrong, and what is most important to you. So think over it and judge yourself whether it is right or wrong. Now, uh, coming to how to help teens in overcoming their constraints, what we have done is, and also this generation also can do is, volunteer for common kitchens for the elderly, because the elderly people are too many in our country and also elsewhere also, supplying books for elderly people. Tutor younger children during vacations. Help the younger ones with hobbies like painting or a, a musical instrument or a particular game. Set up a library in your uh, society. Donate or create a cloth bank in your locality. There are people around who are in need of clothes. It can be as simple as pay it forward, meaning open a door for someone. I have experienced that in US. Uh, a person uh, moving out will open the door for the next person to come in. So that is a way of showing uh, for each other. Clean up around the neighborhood, spread awareness of no plastic, be a part of a club or create a club for cultural activities, library, as you can do in, in your teenage, be a part of traffic regulations and so on. There is no end to it and you can be you can lead a very successful, be proud of yourself. That is what I want to say to the young generation. And as parents or as leaders in this uh, education sector, 
We are all with you and we are very proud of you that you are growing up as young, good adults, more responsible than us, I think so. Thank you, Mr. Dex. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, you talked about first having a good, strong value set that you follow. Try to take those values from your earlier generation and try to garner those and flourish with them. Secondly, getting involved in all the activities that are going on around you, becoming a more responsible citizen will typically help you in becoming a better a teenager at the moment and a better citizen in the future. I think uh, I would request the guests ahead. Now, thank you so much, Anita, ma'am, for uh, this contribution. And the, I would request the guests ahead that uh, please try to talk a little bit about what are the roles that a parent or a school has to play in the growth of a teenager. Because when it comes to society and citizenship and typically cultural issues, the parent is the one who introduces them, the school is the one that enforces them, and the teenager is the one who lives them. So these three stakeholder approaches need to be discussed more in this conversation while we go ahead. Thank you so much, Anita Ma'am. Let me invite the next speaker for today. A very warm welcome to Mrs. Anupama Ramchandra, the principal of Delhi Public School from Electronic City, Bangalore, India. Anupama Ma'am, over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome. Thank you, uh, Daksh, and a very good evening to all my fellow panelists and all the young people that I see here. Uh, the uh, topic is very interesting, and uh, you rightly said that we have to discuss the stakeholders in this entire topic of discussion. Uh, firstly, I would like to uh, reiterate and put it out there that uh, we cannot have, uh, you know, putting the responsibility or blame that who should be putting culture into uh, children because this is something that has to happen in very proactive partnership. Uh, while the parents are responsible for uh, uh, making children uh, citizens of uh, the community, it is equally uh, responsible of the school to reiterate what the children come to school with and also to continue this process of children understanding the society and culture. Having said that, uh, there are many people, especially the young, who say that, why do we need uh, the society to do what we want? Well, uh, I, I have a take on that, uh, that yes, we have tried all that when we were young, and the truth that we have realized is that human beings are integral part of the society and we make up the society. So I don't think there is a life beyond society and culture, uh, uh, you know, it is evolving also. Uh, a society that does not have evolving culture, I would say, is regressive instead of progressive. So the rule, uh, the role of the school is to put into children that they have to be part of this change and the change has to be gradual. Whenever anybody has tried to bring in a drastic change uh, in a short period of time, there's always friction. So, uh, you know, uh, we, we have seen that whenever there is a conflict uh, between the individual and the society, there is always friction between the students and their, uh, you know, the relationship with their parents, with their peer group, and eventually the society. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have to take in the culture, the culture, uh, the cultural norms or the expectations have always gone with the times. So we have to be a part where we have to change the society and we have to do it gradually, like I said. So my only request to all the young people here is please don't think that society and culture are restricted to two things that you're extremely fond of, which is social media and gadget dependence. There is more to life than that. So my only request is stay connected to humans uh, because uh, society is the interdependence and the relationship between human beings. The more you're grounded and you are interacting with humans, you can never go astray. So having said that, uh, please also remember that whenever there is emotional instability, which is characteristic of the fact that you go through a lot of changes in your adolescence, uh, the way you react to what is happening in the society or culture makes a big difference uh, to the way you are uh, taking in the changes in the society. So aggression is not the way out. Uh, negotiations, conversations are the way to go ahead. So I really wish that all our young ones are able to uh, have a smooth transition in these changing times and get the best out of the society and culture in general. 
thank you for your patient hearing thank you so much anupama you are very right when you say that a lot of teenagers take socio economic constraints as just limitation on their technology use and at the same time their own personal freedom and they have to understand that as a society we all function together so there's a role that society also has to play uh, talk a little more to humans interact a little more with them rather than just sticking to the tech that you have in hand because that will keep you more grounded and more associated with everything that's going around it will not alienate you because a teenager is the one who first feels that i am an alien to all the people around me <laughs> i have very different set of ideas for life i have a different kind of a perspective to everything in the world but people don't get me the problem is people do get you but the challenge that people face is that they have a lot of people around them that's why they always have to manage and coordinate and that's what madam said that negotiation will be the way forward you cannot just win all the fights with aggression thank you so much anupam ma'am let me invite the next speaker for today a very warm welcome to mrs uh, Tha- uh, tapati chatterjee the executive director from modern public school from gb nagar uttar pradesh tapati ma'am over to you for the next 3 minutes please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome good evening to all the participants of today's round table discussion as for me to overcome socio cultural constraint in teen development in india we have to address various aspects of social cultural and individual factors this is a complex topic with various facets while we can talk for hours on it the most important step is to educate teens and their families about equality respect and open communication thus promoting positive values we should encourage discussion about these topics at home as well as in school thus giving teens safe places to hang out and talk about their issues also i agree with mrs ramachandran it is definitely a partnership between schools and parents we have to educate teens to think critically about today's social media and its impact on their beliefs and behaviors teens should be provided with role models and mentors who can guide them and show them what possible next step is to make sure that girls have the same chances as boys to go to school learn skill and pursue their dreams they should have opportunities for counseling in mental health also school should provide a good counselor by taking these broad steps we can help teens in india overcome the obstacle they are facing and present and grow into confident healthy adults reaching their full potential thank you thank you so much tapati ma'am and yes you are very right when you say we should be giving them a lot of opportunities including the girls and the boys uh, most importantly looking around them is also a critical factor but let's try to know from the teenagers that what's their perspective on whatever they've heard from the school leaders and what do they think life is all about and when they talk of their own growth what's the role that different stakeholders play what's the role that schools play what's the role that parents play and what is the role that their peers are playing in their growth as a teenager into an adult let me invite the first teenager for today, uh, to be a part of today's discussion a very warm welcome to miss aisha rafat uh, who is an mp at the third world in parliament from ms creative school hyderabad aisha over to you for the next 3 minutes Please unmute yourself. Very warm welcome. Good evening, everyone. According to me, in the dynamic landscape of teen development, social and cultural constraints often pose challenges. Yet there are actionable steps to overcome these barriers and foster growth. Firstly, nurturing open communication is vital. Encouraging teens to voice their thoughts and feelings creates a safe space for exploration and self-expression. Secondly, embracing diversity and inclusivity is essential. Exposing teens to different cultures, beliefs, and perspectives broadens their horizons and cultivates empathy and understanding. Thirdly, providing unwavering support is crucial. 
whether it's from family, educators, or peers. Having a support system empowers teens to navigate obstacles with confidence. Moreover, fostering critical thinking skills equips teens to challenge societal norms and make informed decisions that align with their values. Lastly, cultivating resilience is key, teaching teens to bounce back from setbacks and embrace teens fosters in a strength and fortitude. In essence, by promoting open communication, embracing diversity, providing support, and creating critical thinking and fostering resilience, we can empower teens to overcome social cultural constraints and thrive in the journey of self-discovery and growth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aisha. Uh, I think you summarized what you said during the, your own conversation. Uh, I think resilience can be something that can be taken ahead. This is something that teenagers need a lot right now because uh, the current generation that we see around is very sensitive. Uh, they take things very personally, very quickly, and that's why they have a little more of aggression. And specifically with teenagers, the mix becomes a little complex. So let's try to know from more teenagers that what do they think that when sociocultural challenges or constraints come in, how do they respond to it or how do the different stakeholders respond to it? A very warm welcome to Mr. Thakur Rudra Pratap Singh, the uh, MP of the Third World Team Parliament from Stone Ridge International School, Rudrakur, Uttarakhand, India. Uh, Rudra Pratap, over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues and distinguished guests. Greetings to all gathered here today. I am Thakur Rudra Pratap Singh, studying in grade 9 at the Stone Ridge International School, Uttarakhand. Today, I stand before you with a singular focus to address the pressing issue of overcoming socio-cultural constraints in teen development. As a member of parliament in the third world teen parliament and a representative of the youth, I bring forth my perspective on this crucial issue. Socio-cultural constraints pose significant challenges to the hostile development of teenagers worldwide. Moreover, these constraints manifest in various forms from gender norms and cultural expectations to socioeconomic disparities and discrimination. However, I firmly believe that innovative solutions and collective action can pave the way for progress. Firstly, we must prioritize education as a tool for empowerment by integrating comprehensive and inclusive education curriculum that challenges stereotypes and promotes critical thinking because that is something really very important. We can equip teens with the knowledge and skills to navigate socio-cultural barriers confidently. Secondly, fostering open dialogue and creating safe spaces for teenagers and their expressions is a paramount. By amplifying the voices of marginalized teens and providing platforms for them to share their experiences and perspectives, just like Blub World is doing something really amazing, we can dismantle stereotypes and foster empathy and understanding. <clears throat> Thirdly, leveraging technology and digital media can be a game changer too. It, help, it helps in reshaping cultural perceptions and norms. By harnessing the power of social media and online platforms, we can amplify positive narrative and advocate for social change on a global scale. And finally, let us explore the potential of mentorship programs. When we talk about career counseling sessions and gender equality masterclass, why don't, we have some, uh, why don't we have some mentorship programs tailored specifically to address socio-cultural constraints? Because what I believe is pairing teens with mentors who have navigated similar obstacles can provide invaluable guidance and support, empowering them to overcome barriers and fulfill their potential. In conclusion, overcoming socio-cultural constraints in teen development requires a multifaceted approach that encompasses education, dialogue, technological innovation, and mentorship. As we move forward, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to creating a world where every teen has the opportunity to thrive, regardless of the socio-cultural barriers they may face. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thakur Udhupratap. I think a very important point that you made, I, which we can take forward in the discussion, is start believing in teenagers. <laughs> Let's talk to them as peers. Let's not uh, always you know, think of them as somebody who has to be fed some sort of content, has to be given some sort of guidance, at least start listening to them. And that's the first thing that all the other stakeholders can do. Thank you so much. Let me invite the next speaker for today. A very well, warm welcome to Mr. Arman Sareen, uh, the MP of the World Team Parliament from Blue Bells Model School from Gurgaon, Haryana. Arman, over to you for the next three minutes and a very warm welcome. Thank you so much. So greetings to everyone. I hope all of you are doing great. 
I am Arman. I'm studying in grade eleventh in uh, Blue Hills Foundry School. So I'm really glad that I'm uh, I've been given this opportunity to share my views. Uh, Socio cultural constraint. Uh, all generations have faced them in their own different ways, and the best person who can advocate regarding them are the people who are experiencing them, them themselves, which are us, the youth. Now there can be various kinds of constraints. For example, it is the gender role constraint. Economic inequality constraint, or maybe it's the peer pressure, the press, the biggest pressure of the all, the pressure to be cool. Just try wave once, maybe uh, it it will uh, get you in the cool kids list of the school. But all these things we have to face, and now with the advent of social media, uh, you need to look picture perfect. You are not photogenic. Uh, mirror selfie, uh, like all those filters and all that. So this is this is also a type of constraint. It's not constraint is not just limiting our phone use. Constraint is also there when we use our phones more. So there's there's a paradox over here uh, that we can see. Now before I move to how these constraints we can tackle them, I would also like to give a few examples we can take inspiration from the cases because we talk about the constraints of gender. At one time, women and education were considered different worlds, and now I can see today that in this web talk. The three principles we have, all three are women, including my principal. She is also a woman. So this is a big turnaround story. How perseverance, determination, and collaborative effort. These have turned the tables, and uh, we can see the results. We can take the example of countries like Japan. The in the education system, it's deep rooted to be socially responsible. Moral science. In our what is happens in our moral science is more of a free period when uh, life skills uh, facilitators come to the class is basically playing certain types of games and uh, sometimes even cutting class. So that is kind of the thing, and I do not even doubt a person to the intent of what is the content in the education policy. On policy, everything is very great, but when it comes to generalizing that on the students level, uh, it requires some more deal of effectiveness. it should not be just a formality and uh, we need we, we need to actually uh, just taking an example uh, now it's it's a norm that a lot of uh, all the schools have to educate the students about menstrual hygiene but even today in most of the schools menstrual hygiene is discussed in separate rules for boys and girls why can't they sit together and sometimes even boys are skipped so that is one of the thing which i feel on paper everything is fine but as we trickle it down to the base level of the whole system uh, there are certain problems i would just like to take a few seconds more uh, uh, like just to conclude i would like to say is when we are aware about ourselves we respect ourselves then only we can demand respect from others we respect ourselves we are aware we respect our diversity globalization has brought about a sense of new diversity in the whole world nothing is homogeneous now and if we are resilient resilient towards and we are proud of ourselves then we can uh, bring about a sense of activism like people of the lgbt community did they they were not respected by anyone but at one point of time they br brought themselves to the forefront they fought for their rights and gradually they are getting in every point of the world so just a last line i believe these constraints these are the part and parcel of our this age and every generation has fought to them Some have failed in the past. We can learn from those mistakes, and we can bring a bridge a better uh, future with those. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arman. I think uh, a very important point that you made is that when you look at a teenager, or when teenagers are looking at life, everyone right now expects that picture perfection happening in your life because we compare our daily life with social media. That's the way we self validate. so i think a very important point that could be a very good conclusion to this talk that stop self abnegation self criticism don't do it respect yourself as an individual and that will be the starting point for your growth whether you have to fight constraints whether they are social whether they are uh, you know economical whether they are uh, cultural because everyone has fought constraints and everyone has to live with those constraints in your life figure out a way that you are able to respect yourselves and most importantly when it comes to making way for yourself you respect yourselves and at the same time the boundaries that society has set around you and if you want to break those boundaries how do you break them in a way that people don't get hurt and it becomes a part of evolution rather than just plain revolution
Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of the Love and Web Talks. This was the 228th episode. If you want some other points to be discussed, some other topics to be talked about, do comment on YouTube, and we'll be happy to host those sessions for teenagers across the world. Thank you so much, everyone. Have an amazing evening ahead. Namaste.